As a content creator, one of the toughest things you end up having to deal with is the storage of your data. Buying external hard disks to hold content is expensive and risky, so we've got some solutions for you. A while back while helping my mom edit videos and seeing just how much she was struggling with how and where to start her video, I thought it might be useful to show different storage solutions for content creators. This video is going to be focused on the aspiring content creator whose editing life focuses on just one PC or Mac and is forced to use external hard drives to store their data with future videos to come. That's right, external hard disks can be convenient, but they have a high risk of failure and that could mean the loss of all your data. So let's take a look at what solutions we recommend for the aspiring YouTuber and content creator alike. As we mentioned just a bit ago, external hard disks are convenient, but they have a high risk of failure and they're not intended to be used to edit on. After a fair bit of research, we land on this, the OWC Mercury Elite Pro Dual. Let's take a closer look. The Mercury Elite Pro Dual is a dual 3.5 or 2.5 inch disc unit that measures 147 millimeters high by 85 millimeters wide by 239 millimeters long. On the back of the unit, you'll see a RAID mode switch, more on that in just a second, a set RAID button for initializing the chosen RAID mode, a USB-C connection for your PC or Mac, another USB-C connection for connecting another downstream USB-C device, and two USB 3.2 Type-A ports for connecting even more USB devices. Lastly, there's a barrel connector for the power adapter at the bottom. The magic in this device is its hardware RAID modes. This little device lets you choose how you want to use your disks, and you set that by using the little indicator on the back. First, what is RAID and what is it for? RAID stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, but is also sometimes known as a Redundant Array of Independent Disks. Essentially, it's a means of using multiple hard drives to provide better performance, and most importantly, redundancy in case you lose a disk. There are many different RAID levels, each one providing better redundancy performance or a combination of the two. The Mercury Elite Pro Dual has different RAID options for you to choose from. Out of the box, without making any changes to the unit, the enclosure will run the disk in a RAID 0 mode. RAID 0 uses both disks and writes the data across both drives equally in stripes. Simply put, if you have a video file stored, half the file is written to each drive in stripes. This mode provides the highest performance because when you're accessing that file, it pulls the data from both drives equally, giving you the full performance potential of the disks. But there's a catch here. While this mode provides the best read and write performance, it does not provide any redundancy in case a drive fails. And if a drive fails, the content of both drives is lost. If the highest performance is your priority, choose this option. The next option is RAID 1. RAID 1 is also known as a mirror. So back to our video file example. The file is written to both drives in its entirety. In a RAID 1, you do not get any performance increase when writing to the disk, but you do get performance increases when you read from the disk since the data can be pulled from both drives equally. However, the biggest benefit of RAID 1 is the redundancy of it. If one of your two drives fail, the data is safe and all you need to do is replace the fail drive and away you go. If safety of your data is your highest priority, choose this option. Next option is span, which is not a RAID type. Spanning does just what it sounds like. It essentially combines both disks together to make a single volume where data is written to the first disk until it's full, and then begins writing to the second disk. Spans aren't performant or redundant, and in the case of a single disk failure, you might lose all of your data, or you might only lose the data on the lost disk. To be honest with you, we really do not see a value in using this mode. If you're going to risk your data, you might as well use RAID 0 and get that performance. And last is JBOD slash independent. JBOD stands for just a bunch of disks, and essentially in this mode, you'll be able to access both disks independently and store data on them. This means when you plug in the unit, you see two drives show up, not just one. There is no performance or redundancy features for this mode of access, and again, we'd recommend against using this function unless you're looking for a simple way of getting two disks to show up on your system. Now, let's put this little unit together. We installed two Western Digital 4TB NAS rated Red Plus drives into our unit. We chose these drives because they're NAS rated and they're CMR drives. These drives are rated to run continuously and reliably, and being CMR or conventional magnetic recording drives means they'll be up to the task to handle frequent writes and reads without any performance degradation over time. Now that the unit is built, it's time to test and see how well it performs. We're going to test two of the RAID features of this unit. RAID 0 or striping, which if you remember is the best performance but no redundancy, and RAID 1 or mirror, which is the best redundancy with some read performance. We'll be testing the unit via a Windows 10 desktop using Crystal Disk Mark. Let's get to those results. Starting with the RAID 0 on the Mercury Elite Pro Dual. 
Let's take a look at the first synthetic benchmark, the sequential read-write test using one megabyte blocks with a Q depth of eight. This synthetic benchmark tests reading and writing one megabyte blocks in sequence. Q depth is how many requests the drive has at one time. So the more queues, the more work can be written to the drive at a given time. This test has a Q depth of eight, which is a typical average for a desktop client. The first thing we see here is very high read speeds for the smallest of file sizes. This is very likely disk caching, which is why we see it begin to diminish at 64 and 128 megabyte file sizes. And by 256 megabytes, we start to see the raw performance of the RAID 0 array. The good news is that in this disk configuration, we see consistent performance all the way through to 64 gigabyte file sizes, showing that at least in sequential access, this little unit can definitely hold its own. Now let's take a look at another sequential test, this time with a queue depth of one. A single queue depth means only one disk operation happens at a time, and that slows transfers down as each queue must complete before the next queue can execute. Once again, we see very high numbers in the very low file sizes, likely due to caching on the disks. Interestingly though, we see very little difference in performance between a queue depth of eight and a queue depth of one in 256 megabyte file sizes and higher. Sequential file access is nice, but it's only a portion of the performance characteristics of file access. So let's take a look at the first of our two random read-write tests. Starting with our random four kilobyte block test with a queue depth of 32. In this scenario, instead of the client reading or writing one sequential block after another, the test reads a different block randomly. Random tests are very hard on mechanical drives that need to quickly move their read-write heads to the random blocks, which slows transfers down dramatically. We expect tests like these to really abuse the drives in this unit. And the numbers reflect that reality. Keep in mind, these numbers are low, but video editing doesn't stress discs like this, and we're only including this information for people who'd be interested in using the unit for other purposes. In any case, if your workload requires tons of random reads and writes, you'd be better off using SSDs and not mechanical discs, as they do not suffer from seek times. Last test is the same random test, but with a Q depth of one. And, as in the last test, we see very low speeds as expected. Again, the high speeds seen on the smaller file sizes is caused by disk caching from 16 to 128 megabyte file sizes. Now let's run these tests again with the unit configured for RAID 1, also known as a mirror. And as expected, we see a similar performance experience to the RAID 0 sequential test, but the speeds are effectively cut in half. Again, in a RAID 1 or mirror, the same data is written to both drives, so in the event one disk fails, all of our data is safe. Because of this, there is no performance benefits from having two disks. However, there is a small improvement to read performance as the data can be read by either disk. Again, we see the same small file disk caching kick in, but its performance is half of that of the RAID 0. Now to the RAID 1 sequential test with a Q depth of one. And like we saw in our previous RAID test, the graph is essentially the same with very little difference in performance from the Q depth of eight. The consistency is very nice to see here. Now back to the random tests. With a Q depth of 32 on the mirror, we see just how punishing tests like these are. And in this RAID 1 mirror, without the help of striping, we see very low numbers, which again is expected. Finally, our last random test, this time with the Q depth of one. And like the previous graph, we see just how tough random read and writes are. Overall, it's nice to see the Q depth has little bearing on the disk performance. Now that we've got the synthetic test results, let's take one more look at the results of Blackmagic Design's disk speed test for both RAID 0 and RAID 1 configurations. For those of you unfamiliar with Blackmagic Design and their video editing software, DaVinci Resolve, they're a well-known competitor to Adobe Premiere Pro and Apple Final Cut Pro and provide their video editing software for free with add-on purchases and hardware. Why we like this test is that it gives us a reliable indicator of the types of video files you can edit on a given tested disk, including its native codec and resolution. In effect, it's a nice at-a-glance test for people who might be interested in editing video directly from the Mercury Elite Pro Dual itself. In the RAID 0 configuration, the disk speed test shows that this little unit would work well for 4K video editing in ProRes 442 high quality format up to 60 frames a second, but would struggle with the even larger video formats. Good news here, if you're editing in 1080p or 2K video, you'll have no issue editing directly from the unit in RAID 0 mode. In the RAID 1 configuration, the unit shows that it's less of a contender for editing directly from the disk, but still would handle 1080p up to 4K at 30 frames in ProRes 442 high quality. Again, using RAID 1 for this unit would be because your primary focus is the reliability and safety of your data, not for editing performance. 
There's a lot to say about this little unit and what it's capable of doing for a small time content creator or YouTuber. First and foremost, if you're looking for reliable and redundant storage for your media, it's a great fit. If you're just looking for a safe place to store your data, buy it, throw some large mechanical drives in it, set it to RAID 1 and enjoy. If you want to use it as your editing drive, then we recommend something faster like 7200 RPM mechanical discs or SAT SSDs in a RAID 0 and rock and roll. The real value in this unit is its flexibility, its easy to set and forget configuration, and its performance. I liked it so much after testing it, I decided that I'm going to keep it for myself and use it for editing on my Mac and toss out my old external Western Digital USB 3 hard drive. And I think that's saying something. We'll put some disc pairing recommendations in the video description below if you're looking for discs to pair with the unit. Thank you for watching this video. We genuinely hope you found it valuable and we'd love to know what you think, so tell us in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with our opinions? Is there something else you'd like tested? We would love to know. If this is the first time you've seen us, subscribe, like right now. If you like what we do and you want to be all social, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And lastly, get on our Discord. It's a great growing community of people who love tech and we'd be happy to have you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.